This report cites Western intelligence, which suggests that back in February, officials, senior officials apparently, from both Russia and China met. And during that discussion, apparently, uh, they discussed the possibility of the invasion of Ukraine. And at least according to the New York Times, during that conversation, Chinese officials said to Russian officials that if they were going to press ahead with an invasion of Ukraine, and this, of course, has been threatened for months with troops massing on the border, uh, then China would very much prefer if they did it after the closing ceremony of the Winter Olympics in Beijing. Now, of course, that's what happened uh, not that long after. After the Winter Olympics, Russian tanks did finally roll over the border and into Ukraine. Uh, and the reason that this story is so interesting and such a big deal is because it really does, at least on the face of it, seem to confirm a level of knowledge in Beijing about this invasion. Now, this is not at all to suggest, and nor does the report suggest, that this is any, in any way a coordinated strike, that, that Beijing was somehow egging Russia on. Um, it's well known that Beijing has a pretty anguished in some ways, or at least an uneasy attitude towards uh, this, uh, this, this invasion. In some ways, it serves Beijing's interests. In other ways, it does the exact opposite. It cuts right across Beijing's interests. So this is not to suggest that Beijing was somehow necessarily in collusion, but it does apparently show a level of knowledge, and it does also show, at least at some level, a level of coordination between the two countries in order to try and preserve their interests, or, or at least to try and protect their interests. And you can imagine, or you can bet rather, uh, that Western intelligence officials, uh, if they do have this intelligence, will be looking very, very hard at what the implications are, not just for Russia and China, but also the implications about this tightened cooperation between Russia and China and what it means for the world. Stephen, has the Australian government, do we know, seen these intelligence reports? No, the government hasn't said if it's seen these reports or not. Uh, it's not clear whether these intelligence reports were circulated widely. According to the New York Times, they were seen by both American and European officials. Um, and one other thing I should add quickly on it, the reports did not say that this was a discussion uh, that had been held at the level of leaders, at the level of Vladimir Putin and Xi Jinping. So it's, there's no suggestion that it's been conducted at that level. It's happening at a more junior level. Nonetheless, um, it, does, it does dovetail with some of the concerns that Australia and the Foreign Minister, Maurice Payne, have articulated about the new uh, special partnership the, between um, Russia and China. Okay. In a speech, incidentally, we just a few days ago that Maurice Payne gave, uh, she actually said uh, that Australia was watching this relationship very closely. She said while there was a limit to the alignment between, uh, between Russia and China and to what that alignment could achieve, nonetheless, Australia and other countries could not be complacent about the risk that it posed, particularly given the fact that both countries, Russia and China, appear to be searching, uh, appear to be turning ever more sharply towards authoritarianism in the case of Russia to outright aggression, uh, launching an invasion across an international border. Stephen, good to talk. Thanks so much. Thanks, Beverly.